Well, I've got one of these little poncho tent set up down here, and I'm going to spend the night. But it happened to remind me I should show you the sleeping bag that I'm going to be using. Uh, like some of the people from Canada might be familiar with these, but they're old. But they're like the grandfather of all sleeping bags. It's a woods, and this is the three star. But I'll show you what this thing is. They're, like I say, this is an older one, but they're meant to last a lifetime. You know, when they were what Amundsen favored, bird favored all of the Arctic explorers, this is the bag that they use. And they were not cheap. Even back then, they were $65. But you know, in today's money, that's over $1,000. So, you know, you had to be pretty serious about your sleeping bag. But they're down. And here's what I do like. There's not a zipper. It snaps. And then they've got a, a quite a large flap that, that hangs over. Because if you've ever been real cold, I tell you, a zipper isn't just a killer. In fact, there used to be a lot of complaints from the Arctic explorers. That's where zippers really first started getting used. And they would freeze up and they would jam and they would break. And so pretty soon they end up having their bags pinned together and stuff. So, you know, snaps was the way to go. Like I say, this is one of the old ones because it's a three star. And there's two different sizes. This is a 78 by 84. They make a 90 by 92 uh, when it's opened all the way. But the newer ones come with flannel. This is still the old wool. And they still sell something that's called a woods bag, but See, originally they were made in Ottawa. Then they opened another branch in New York. And now, now that company got bought up by another company and, and some of them are being made overseas and there's a lot of, you know, they're using a lot of synthetics in them and stuff. There's no synthetics in these. But these old ones are cool, but you don't run into them very often. But, you know, keep that in mind if you should ever see that bag, because that's the bag they come in. Though some of the newer ones I've seen where they had, yeah, like here, you can barely see it, but there's three stars on them. And some of them will have the five stars. And some of them will be actually a bag inside of a bag. I think that was like the Amundsen Special or something, but they're a good bag. And they're the first really true sleeping bag. But I'm glad to have one. And it's been to like low 30s every night around here. So I thought, well, I'll bring this one out. I've got other sleeping bags, many other sleeping bags, including that, uh, that Italian mountain arctic, you know, super cold sleeping bag, which is great, but really too much bag for this. This would be just perfectly fine. But you shouldn't keep your eyes open. You should never run across them. Because they're, they're about as cool as that stuff gets. Nothing you want to hike around with. They're heavy, you know, and bulky, but a good bag. You know, like if you're going dog sled, pack horse, canoe, something like that, but if you're lugging around foot, then you don't really care for this bag. But I'm glad to have it. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm going to stay the night in that thing. But I was also going to show you, this is how they look if you set up one. And I just got a stick prop it up. But it's just enough to get you out of the elements and out of the wind. But they work that way. And I will be 
selling some of them off. Uh, the one thing I don't have though is enough of the poles. The pole kits are rather rare. Well, for good reason. But I've got a bunch of, I've got half a dozen of them boxed up. I just got to list them some way. I'm going to decide how to do that. And they're all the, the medium size. There's three sizes. And those are the, you know, I've got, because I've got a few of the smaller ones, which would be right for kids. But, okay, like I say, I don't have enough pole kits, so I'm not sending pole kits with them. And there's a good reason for that. These, there's nothing special about these pole kits. And most of the people who immediately discard them, and the reason there's a shortage of them is because the military, like all militaries did, as they were on maneuver shed any extra weight and these they just consider extra weight. The only advantage to them, you know, these are really poor stakes, but they do have a bend to them so that when they go into the post for storage, they don't rattle around. You know, that's the only thing they were good for. But I think you know these all got ditched and, and then and get back out of the replacement of the new set. But I'm going to see if I can't get somebody to try to find me some more of these. But, you know, I've got enough for my needs, but like I say, the ones I sell, I can't sell pole kits with them. But you can get by fine. You can buy better stakes, and you can use anything for pole. But I'll list them one of these days. Because I got it figured out with the shipping, I can sell each one for $25. Because it cost me like $13 to ship them. And I can only get one in a box, so that's the way they're going to have to be. And then I'll see if I can come up with more pole kits, I'll let you know. But for now, they're going to have to be without pole kits. But like I say, the first thing people do when they upgrade them you know, is immediately put a different pole. Uh, different stakes particularly because they aren't the best stake though I did have one that one I had set up for two days and both days were high wind warnings but it stayed but uh, I wouldn't count on them a lot but I think part of it is that the shape of them they don't catch a lot of wind so they work but that'll come one of these days I was going to do it today but I haven't got around to it but I, I haven't decided how because it's hard I don't want to just list them on eBay because then they'll be gone and I really want them to go to my subscribers. So I might do it in my Etsy store, do it that way. Uh, less likely of being grabbed up, but I'll see. If, when I get them listed, I'll, I'll let people know. I think that'd be the easiest way to do it. But tonight I'll be camping. Oh, and. We have come to the conclusion after much scouring, though they had them listed as Russian. They are not Russian. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure they are Polish. Now, if anybody can actually read that, I can't see if it's focusing or not, but I believe them to be Polish, which is good in a way because they, you know, a lot of countries used something similar to this, but these are the best of the bucket. 